Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm Molly Gamble, Editor-in-Chief of Splitbackers Healthcare. We'll begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. We're looking forward to hearing your questions. Additionally, in about a week following the webinar, we'll be sending you a copy of the presentation to the email you use to register. At this time, it's now my pleasure to start today's webinar by introducing our presenters. Jonathan Kernia is the Director of Non-Acute Channels for Optus Freight Logistics and is responsible for the strategic development of logistics and freight management services for non-acute healthcare channels, such as ASC, lab, and pharmacy. Prior to Cardinal Health's acquisition of FDSI Logistics, Jonathan was responsible for sales and marketing, led the field operations team, and serviced national accounts while continually working on developing innovative solutions to change how logistics and freight are delivered to the healthcare industry. Prior to FDSI, he served several years as an EMT paramedic for the city of Atlanta, providing him not only experience as a clinical end user, but also in healthcare operations at the ground level. Tim Howitt is the materials manager for Lafayette Surgical Specialty Hospital. Tim has been in the healthcare field for close to 30 years, with 25 of those years in supply chain management. He started with an entry-level position at a 360-bed hospital, and then 13 years ago went on to take a materials manager role at a 20-bed hospital, where he was one of the very first hires and has seen that hospital go from a concrete slab to an 8,000 cases per year facility. Thank you, Molly. So we are going to talk a little bit today about improving your bottom line without impacting patient care. So the format of today's call is going to go, um, I'm going to review a little bit about freight management program, both understanding why freight is important to your uh, facility, as well as understanding what a freight management provider can do for you. And then we're going to introduce Tim and we're going to let him speak a little bit about his facility down there in Lafayette in regards to how um, he's been successful, how we've been able to successfully utilize a freight management program. So um, as Molly mentioned, my name is Jonathan. I actually uh, work with Incarnal Health in a company called OptiFreight Logistics. So uh, before we get started, I want to give a little overview of who OptiFreight Logistics is to give you a little scope of, um, of the company you're talking to today. So we currently manage over 17 million shipments per year, and we have over 7,000 uh, vendors enrolled in our program. We're going to speak to why it's an important number later on in the presentation today. Uh, we service over 21,000 facilities and over 2,000 surgery centers all over the country. Um, we are in contract with most GPOs, both at a national and a local level, and we save our customers over $200 million a year on an annual basis, and that number continues to grow as we bring more clients on board. Uh, we have a strategic relationship with thousands of suppliers, and more importantly, with over 25 carriers, and we're going to discuss what that means as well as we go along today here. So, before we get started, I wanted to, to express that, you know, from a healthcare uh, supplier, OptiFreight Logistics, we understand that the healthcare industry is constantly evolving and that the ever-changing environment is requiring us to be more agile and adaptable, both from a provider perspective as well as from a supplier perspective. So um, I liken it back to, it's one of, uh, if anyone's ever went to, uh, uh, went to business school or ever read any kind of business case studies, one of the most famous stories is Kodak Film, uh, over a century old, an old institution uh, that started with the uh, photography industry, ultimately had a, I wouldn't say monopoly, but dominated that industry. So Kodak came along and as the industry progressed, uh, they continued to do what they thought was best, and that was the old uh, photography and film uh, um, um, era. But as we came into the turn of the century around 2000, the concept of digital photography came around, and Kodak was reluctant to change. So after 100 plus years on top of the market, because they weren't able or willing to make a, an, adapt, an adaptation to what the market was going to be, they ultimately fall. That failure is common across many industries. We can talk about several other case studies. I'm sure you've all heard them before. But the reason that's important today is that we are in an environment in healthcare that we're being asked to do more with less. If we don't change, we're going to be on the bottom of that uh, of that list, and we're ultimately going to find ourselves out of a out of a business or out of a job here. So. It's important for both the supplier industry as well as the provider industry to look for opportunities that can help reduce costs, help drive costs out of your supply chain without adding additional stress to your, uh, to your resources because we understand how limited your resources are as you're trying to uh, 
to operate your business and ultimately how you're focused on what the ultimate goal is patient care and patient outcome. So we're going to talk about a little bit of something today called freight management that has little to no impact on your patient care if it's done appropriately. So we're going to start with the hidden cost of freight. The idea here is to kind of give an idea of where this freight charge is coming from and then next I'll talk about how freight management works. So if we took a look, uh, take a look at a typical surgery center, and I remember going back 10, 15 years ago when we asked a surgery center or a hospital even, hey, um, where is your freight cost? How are you spending money on freight? The typical answer would be we don't have a freight cost because we ultimately receive all our product from the distributor. And that could be Cardinal, that could be McKesson, that could be Medline, whoever it is. Well, that was a typical answer to say freight is not of, um, we're, we're not paying attention to freight because it's not impacting us. Well, what we've learned over the years is that in a typical surgery center, 40% of your product is coming from that distributor. So that's coming from Cardinal McKesson, but 60% is coming from the supplier directly. So today, we are going to take that 40% that's coming from the distributor, we're going to uh, put that aside. That's not something we're here to address today because typically freight is included in that contract with that distributor. So Cardinal, McKesson, Medline, you have an arrangement with that uh, uh, distributor that ultimately includes their transportation costs as well as their cost of business and so forth. So we're going to take that 40% aside. And what we want to focus on today is that 60% that's coming directly from the manufacturer supplier. And the reason why we want to focus on that is because you, as a surgery center, are most likely paying for freight directly to the manufacturer if you're not addressing it. And you're doing so in a mechanism called prepay and add. Prepay and add is a, is, is a term that's utilized, it's, it's not industry specific, it's, it's actually freight specific, but it's basically dictating the fact that you are paying for freight as a separate line item on the invoice. And why that's important is because typically if you're not addressing your freight with your, uh, with your manufacturer, your supplier, they're charging you freight at um, market value or, or greater. We're going to use the word list price today, so we're going to talk about how a manufacturer uses freight as a profit center by charging greater than carrier list price. Now, by addressing your freight from those direct shipments coming to your facilities from the manufacturers, you can save anywhere from 30 to 50% back to your facility. Imagine what 30 to 50% savings can do on freight back to your facility in regards to uh, better patient care, potentially uh, um, ultimately utilizing better resources as well. So what we want to focus on first is how manufacturers utilize freight as a profit center. Um, I, I've made presentations like this before, and this is where I always like to kind of take a step back and, and, and tell a little anecdotal story about a friend of mine. This goes back about 15 years ago, back when eBay was a thing. If anybody out there remembers eBay well before Amazon or any of those other kind of marketplaces. But it was a marketplace that you as an individual can place um, anything you want for sale. Uh, you would just take a picture of it, and you would uh, post it online, and you would ultimately have a bidding war to ultimately have a, um, a, a consumer somewhere in the country pay for it. Well, uh, my friend came to me 15 years ago and said, you know, Jonathan, I found out this just remarkably easy way to move stuff faster. So he was selling stuff like tools and old toys around his house, and he was just trying to clean up some of the area in his house. But he came to me and said, I, I can sell stuff a lot faster on eBay because I'm posting the cost of what I'm selling lower, significantly lower, and then once they agree to ultimately buy the product, I will invoice them the freight charge, and because they're paying me for it, I can charge them whatever I want for freight. I'm only paying FedEx or UPS $5 to ship it, but I'm going to charge them $25. And I'm going to make all my money there, but because the cost is less than it typically would be um, if, if they just go to an, a, a different site, he's often able to make money that way. And, and the reason I bring that up is because that's such a, a simple idea or such a simple concept of how freight can be used as a profit center, and it's not industry uh, specific. There's plenty of vendors out there um, in, in multiple of industries that can utilize freight as a profit center if you're not addressing it. So um, in healthcare, this was considered to be a standard business practice, and it often goes unnoticed because a lot of times you're taking your efforts to negotiate the product cost. So if you're not addressing the freight cost, when you're uh, negotiating the product cost, we're going to have a, a gap there as far as where potential savings could, uh, could um, come from. Um, one other component of this is that I mentioned before that the line item that says shipping, 
Often it says shipping and handling, or S and H, or freight. And you know, stop me if you've seen this before. It's that line below the product cost that we all reluctantly pay just because we have no other mechanism to pay for it if we're not taking it off the invoice. But when they include, when I say they, I, I mean the manufacturer, when they're including the handling cost into the shipping cost, you have absolutely no visibility of what you're paying for freight or a handling cost. A lot of times, that handling cost, you may not even be contractually obligated to pay in the first place. But because you can't see it as a separate line item, you ultimately are uh, going to be forced to pay as you process the invoice to your AP. So um, ultimately, I, pulling off the freight cost and isolating the handling cost is going to give us an opportunity to, uh, to see where we're spending money, and we can address it through um, a freight management program, which we're going to go over here in just a second. One other uh, kind of component that I want to call out here is that when the manufacturer is controlling the freight cost, they may revert to other business practices such as using next day delivery even when you don't ask for it. You may not request that package to come overnight, but they may ship it to you overnight. And the reason being is that there is a greater margin in the uh, overnight shipment for them as opposed to a second day shipment or potentially a ground shipment. So they're using freight in a multitude of different ways to actually drive additional profit at their institute, at their, um, at their, um, um, at the manufacturer. So on average, when we talk about this profit center, after years of uh, being in the industry in healthcare and working with healthcare vendors, uh, we, we've come to uh, conclude that the average profit per package is $17. Another way to think of this is the average savings per package to you should be. $17. So if you actually, every time you see a FedEx or UPS box on your dock or on your receiving uh, location, just think to yourself, that's $17 worth of additional savings I could be driving at my facility if I'm managing my freight. So what does $17 per package mean? Well, think about this. If you have, let's just say, 500 packages coming into your facility and you're saving $17 per package, you're going to add up to, uh, in this case, $8,500 in savings. Now, that's just a stagnant number of 500 shipments. What if you have 1,000? What if you have 5,000 packages coming into your uh, facility? I, I don't know what your uh, current receiving level is today, but what I do know is that if we address the actual freight coming in per package, you're going to be able to uh, exponentially grow your savings based on uh, shipments being uh, routed through a freight management program. So let's talk a little bit. Hopefully that gives you some, some idea about where freight comes from, why it's a component, why we should address it, how manufacturers use it for a profit center, and put a little bit of flavor to what the savings potential is. But let's talk a little bit about understanding freight management. So uh, we have a visual here, and hopefully this makes sense, but it's, a, it's meant to be very simple. Um, without a freight management provider, what ultimately happens is you place a purchase order to your uh, supplier. The supplier fulfills that purchase order. The carrier comes. They pick it up the package at the location. They drive across the country, maybe fly, and they drop off that package at your dock. That's a, a pretty standard linear model of how, uh, uh, of how your current process would work without a freight management program. Now, when you introduce a freight management program, that process, that linear process of the box moving from location A to location B to location C is going to stay the same. The only difference is the back-end invoice. So you're still providing the PO to your vendor. You're still, uh, the vendor still ultimately having a carrier pick it up at their location. The carrier, most of the time the same carrier, is going to be delivering that package to your facility. The only difference is we are going to remove that freight charge from that product invoice and it's going to be invoiced to you at a discounted rate on a separate freight invoice, arguably with the other shipments that were routed on um, that given week's invoice. So this is one of my favorite slides. I think this depicts exactly the, uh, the, the, the impact that a freight management program can have at any facility. So on the left, we're going to take a look at a sample invoice from any vendor. You name a vendor A through Z. If you're not using a freight management provider, they're going to assess you for the product cost. In this case, it looks like we've uh, identified it at $693. And then typically below that, you're going to have a, sh a shipping and a handling cost. Again, without addressing that freight, you're susceptible to having to pay that invoice in its entirety without ever being able to negotiate that freight cost. 
So that's fifty dollars and seventy nine cents. The manufacturer, uh, the manufacturer supplier is, is, is invoicing on the product invoice is ultimately going to be greater than carrier list price on average. Now, if we take a look at the invoice on the right, it's the exact opposite. We've now removed that shipping and handling cost, so now you're only paying for the product cost, and that shipping cost is going to be routed through the invoice that comes from your freight management provider, and again, a discount applied. So hopefully this, this really galvanizes the concept of freight management. This is a single invoice. I challenge you know, any one of you to walk into your AP department and pull a product invoice from any of your, uh, you know, I even start with even an orthopedic, uh, orthopedic vendors to, to see for yourself, if you're not using a freight management provider, you're going to see that freight charge on the invoice, and if you're not capturing as a separate line item, you're not ultimately addressing that freight. So um, often I'm asked, you know, why has freight management been so successful? You know, there's been, um, I'd say, probably a shift in the healthcare market about 15 to 20 years ago where ultimately the industry itself holistically was being a challenge to reduce cost, and they were ultimately looking for um, some type of opportunity that would be quick, that would be painless, seamless, and would uh, provide meaningful savings. So the reason why, and then as we migrated into the surgery center marketplace, uh, arguably uh, five to 10 years ago, depending on uh, how we view the market, um, the reason we've had such success as a freight management provider is because of its simplicity and because you are immediately returning savings from day one. All you need to do from your perspective is simply provide a vendor list. A through Z of the vendors you're currently using, and typically the account number is helpful in that regard too. We'll talk about that here at the end. And the freight management provider drives the entire process. So the provider of uh, the freight management provider can help reduce costs with no clinical impact. So there's no uh, alteration of patient outcome. There's very little, if any, uh, 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 use of your resources to manage this process. It's simply just setting up the program by helping us identify which vendors you're currently using so we can go to work. Um, and again, because we're saving per package and every package that is shipped through the program, you're gonna see that $17 on average uh, savings, you will start saving immediately from day one. So um, one thing we wanna talk about here is if you're, to, uh, if you're considering freight management, if you're taking a look at the providers out there, you know, again, it's, it's, it's obvious that I'm uh, talking and speaking on behalf of uh, OptiFreight Logistics, but my goal here today is not to, to ultimately sway you to utilizing OptiFreight Logistics. It's, it's hopefully to understand the meaningfulness of using a freight management provider. And if you're in the market looking for a provider, there are a couple things to consider before you make your decision of what provider to use. We talked about before, you do not want to change your process, your material, your, your process flow. Anything you're doing um, from a, a procurement uh, perspective, you don't necessarily want to impact that because what the last thing we want is any kind of impact on patient care and patient outcome. So we want to be able to utilize the same suppliers you're currently using today under those same product uh, negotiated contracts that you're currently using today and just deploying on the back end a freight management program to help reduce the cost. Um, generally, it's the same freight carrier. You've heard me say now a couple times FedEx and UPS. Um, they are the two in the market that typically drive most of the small parcel packages being delivered. Um, often, um, you won't see a difference in which carrier is being used. You're still going to have the same quality deli uh, transport delivery process from both FedEx and UPS. So you want to make sure you're using a, um, a, a sanctioned or a, a validated freight carrier in that regard. Um, the most important aspect of a freight management provider in this market, in the service in our marketplace, is the scale. Scale is critical. Uh, we talked before that if we're actually counting savings per package, we're going to want the most packages coming through the program, which means we want the most vendors participating in the program, which means we want a provider that has the most relationships and the most effectiveness in driving vendors to the program. So scale is important. You're going to be able to uh, uh, ultimately utilize the vendors you're currently using, but you want as many vendors shipping in the program as possible. And you want as frequent, and this is a, a slightly different concept because the vendor participating in the program, you also want them utilizing the program on every single transaction. 
You don't want them just to use it on a single purchase order the first time you call them and never ship again. So the scalability and the scale of the provider is important in driving the overall value that a freight management provider can bring to your, uh, to your facility. And then, of course, with experience becomes um, a refined implementation process. The faster you can implement the program without impact to your team, to your staff, the faster you'll start realizing savings. So uh, speed becomes a, a factor in this. Um, that's the front end of freight management, routing freight at a discounted rate and taking that profit center back away from the vendor. There is a lot of value on the back end once you have all this data coming into your freight management provider. So we're going to take a look here about the, uh, a little bit on metrics and potentially reporting. From the easiest or from the simple statement of we're saving $17 per package, the first thing you're going to want to track is your savings in the program. So hopefully you'll have access to a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly ad hoc report that will help identify your savings per package so you can see how your program is ultimately performing. Another specific metric that is incredibly important is your shipping modes. So within shipping modes, I'm going to speak to um, within FedEx and UPS, we're going to talk about service level. So that's your overnight, and for those that are a little savvy when it comes to uh, small parcel carriers, there's anywhere between three to four levels of overnight. There's your first overnight. There's your priority overnight. There's your standard overnight, all three of which come with a different price tag. Um, there's also your second day shipping and your ground shipping. It's probably not a surprise to anybody out there that the faster a package is delivered to you, the more you're going to pay. So if you understand and if you arguably see for the first time, now that you're controlling your freight costs, how you're ultimately shipping, you're going to be able to uh, make some uh, adjustments and make some shifts accordingly to help reduce your costs beyond the carrier discount. So just anecdotally think, if I can take a standard overnight package and push it down to the second day because I don't need that package tomorrow, but I need it by the end of the week, you're going to save an additional $5, $10, $15 per package by doing so. Um, along with, uh, we talked a little bit about this before, about the handling fees. Um, arguably for the first time, once you pull the freight costs off the product invoice, you'll start seeing handling fees for the first time. We mentioned before that in some cases you are not contractually obligated to pay that handling fee or potentially that accessorial fee, but because you haven't had a mechanism to see that or to, uh, to, to track it prior, there's been no way for you to address it. So having a freight management provider that can, report, uh, that can provide you those types of reporting uh, on handling fees and accessorial fees are, are incredibly important. And of course, there's the uh, benchmark concept as well. You, know, you want to be able to, uh, to measure how well your program is performing both from a savings perspective, as well as from a, um, as well as from a um, uh, comparison against the other uh, uh, facilities in your area, and so forth. So uh, let's talk a little bit about if you're currently using a freight management program, or if you want to understand how to best utilize a freight management program, even if you're not using one today. So we're going uh, we're gonna to call these best practices, and, and over the years, um, we've identified several areas that uh, can drive the greatest value when you ultimately collaborate with your provider. So first on the list, you're going to see PO comments. And what this means to us is basically the, uh, the written instructions on the, or, I'm sorry, on the purchase order that is going to the manufacturer that includes the shipping instructions to be uh, utilized in a third-party account number. Now, it seems kind of complicated, maybe it seems a little clunky. Well, your provider can provide examples of how to deploy this mechanism. It's actually quite simple, especially if you're on any kind of ERP system that can help automate that process. But by establishing that PO comment per vendor transaction, we are going to see an uplift in volume anywhere from 30 to 40 percent. Now, again, going back to the more volume that's routed through the program, the more packages that come through the program, the greater the savings. Um, the next idea is large freight. The concept of utilizing your freight management provider to help reduce costs on large freight, and the break point here for us is 150 pounds. Uh, at 150 pounds, it no longer makes sense to utilize FedEx or UPS. You're now going to want to utilize an LTL provider, which in our world stands for less than truckload. Um, and think of that as uh, YRC, uh, Conway, Roadway. I can go down a list of those types of vendors. It's basically your big semis driving down a highway, um, 
you ultimately can help reduce your cost by, um, by utilizing a large freight network as well. So any freight management provider should have access to tariffs with those carriers to help reduce the cost. It's the same concept that we just talked about before, but just in most terms, think of it as capital equipment. So anytime you have large transactions or a pallet of goods coming in that's not going to come on via FedEx or via UPS, you'll want to use a large freight provider, and your uh, freight management program should be able to provide you access to that. And let's not forget about outbound. Um, the industry tells us that 90% of your freight cost um, is typically in or inbound. It's coming from your manufacturer to your facility. And that leaves about 10% of your freight that's leaving your facility. So if you've ultimately uh, have a, a discount in place with your freight management provider, you ultimately should be using those rates for any packages leaving your facility. Sometimes those include um, vendor returns, um, any type of documentation or x-rays going in between your physicians or, or surgery centers. So just think about any of those packages that are leaving your facility you can ultimately utilize this uh, program for. Uh, the final is, this kind of goes in, in line with PO comment, reminding your suppliers to use freight management programs. So depending on how you're currently procuring your product with the vendor, we, we see some cases where those uh, uh, vendors are uh, being um, POs are being submitted to that vendor verbally over the phone. If your buyers, if your procurement agents are aware of you know, the freight management program and they have the, uh, the wherewithal while they're talking to the vendor place in order just to remind them, hey, don't forget, use this account number. Hey, don't forget, ultimately, uh, you know, I'm with this freight management provider. That helps drive volume. So again, this is all best practices. Your freight management provider is going to do all the heavy lifting. But if you want to maximize the value of your freight management program, these are some concepts and these are some best practices that you can consider engaging with when you're talking to your freight management provider. Okay, so um, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's easy for me to sit here and talk to you about the value um, from the supplier community of utilizing a freight management program and, and tell you a little bit about how to utilize a freight management program. But what we thought would be very impactful is to ultimately invite one of your colleagues to the stage with us today to, to speak on um, how he's deployed a freight management program at his facility and what it's meant to them. To me, it's always more meaningful coming from one of your colleagues than from someone in my position just because it'll make a, it, it hopefully it'll make that much more of an impact at your, uh, um, at your facility. So without uh, further ado, I want to introduce Tim. And Tim's going to tell us a little bit about his institution and, and where he comes from. And we have a couple of... Uh, um, questions that we'd like to ask Tim here, and, and we'll open up the Q&A after Tim is finished here. So, but Tim, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you joining us today. So just, just to get started, can you tell us a little bit about your facility? Yeah, I'm at a uh, outpatient surgery type hospital here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, we've been open almost 13 years. We have eight OR rooms, 20 overnight beds, and a couple of pain rooms. We do about 8,000 cases annually, orthopedic, uh, spine cases, ENT, a uh, little bit of other stuff as well. Excellent. So, so what made you decide to sign up for a freight management company in the first place? Well, mine was my uh, cardinal sales rep, who I guess was also my Opti Freight sales rep. He had been asking me about it for a long time, possibly as much as two years. It was one of those kind of situations. Sounded too good to be true. Um, wasn't a priority for me. I had, you know. Like everyone who's in, in materials, you've got a million things going on. You wear so many different hats. Um, something like this just almost sounded like a scam to some degree. So it wasn't a priority. And, you know, after you know a year or two, yeah, him asking me, finally I said, all right, I'll give it a shot. And still to this day, I'm kicking myself for not having signed up sooner. Um, <laughs> it's so simple to start up. Like Jonathan said, um, you know, it was a combination of uh, getting on my vendor list. I remember having to turn over like my account numbers. I think we uh, jointly filled out a letter to send all the vendors, letting them know officially, hey, we at Lafayette Surgical want to start using uh, OptiFreight, this third-party company for our freight. Uh, you know, did all that kind of, you know, initial preparation. Did not take long at all. I want to say a couple of hours, you know, over a couple of days. Um, and and that was it. You know, shipping was always something I didn't think, and like Jonathan said, I could really negotiate. I think a lot of y'all probably know, at least down here, you know, when we create a PO, 
we only put the uh, the cost of the item on the PO. We negotiate prices uh, for the individual items, contracts with you know through Med Assets or anything. It's all about the item cost. Freight, I never saw, or shipping cost, I never saw it. Uh, when the invoice went to my accounting department, she matched up my PO to the uh, to the invoice, and she just tacked on freight. Um, the only time she ever questioned it is if it seemed excessively high to her, but you know that's a that's a relative amount of uh, you know term for her. So I didn't know anything about you know how to track shipping and so forth. So um, yeah, finally gave in, and uh, the savings have been tremendous. Well, I'm, I'm glad it was such a positive experience, but. It, if, can we take a look before um, you've actually deployed a freight management program? What type of problems were you facing when it came to shipping? Um, like I said, I had no idea what the costs were, I guess, was the biggest thing. And like you said, there's handling thing. You'll occasionally, when you place an order over the phone, somebody will say, oh, there's a handling charge or whatever. And you just kind of shrug your shoulders and say, okay. Um, there's not a whole <laughs> lot you, you feel you can do about it. Um, uh, one of the, the big examples I like to give where OptiFreight has helped me, and again, in my you know ignorance in, in shipping costs, like probably most of y'all, every couple of years I would have to ship outbound pallets of something. If I was doing a trade-in or whatever, and for some reason I had to ship it back, there I definitely had no idea what to do. In the old days, I looked in the phone book and just picked a freight company. Now, you know, just look on the internet, grab one, call them get a quote and just again figure well okay that's you know that's what it is um, it, you know in, in our job we don't necessarily have a lot of time to shop around for you know uh, cost on those kind of things well with OptiFreight I know twice since we signed up for them I had to ship out a pallet I called my OptiFreight uh, you know inside sales rep and just said hey here's what I've got here's where it needs to go and they took care of everything um, they got me the price, which in both cases, you know, seemed really low. The truck driver showed up with the bill of lading already filled out. I just had to sign off on it. Boom, out the, the shipment went. Um, another time with outbound, uh, well, with, uh, with large freight, we were buying some sterilizers actually about a year ago. And the quote from the company was, I want to say it was around the five grand mark for shipping it in. Well, I said, hey, hold on, you know, I got a third-party company. I'll arrange to get it shipped myself from your location to me. And OptiFreight came back with a much, much lower quote. Uh, I will say the, uh, the uh, sterilizer company squawked a little bit, started saying, oh, the stuff ships from Canada, so therefore, you know, they did not want to relinquish that. But what I was able to do was say, well, can you match the price that I'm getting from this third party? And they did. And I want to say I saved like $3,500 um, on the cost of it. So, um, you know, it's little things like that where OptiFreight has definitely come in handy and made my, uh, my job easier. Yeah, that, that's a great example, Tim. I hear that often. It's one of those, if you don't ask, you'll never know that concept. So in that case, uh, it was a simple question that was able to drive additional value to you because I like to continue you a little dangerous because of your experience with a freight management program. So well, that's great. I appreciate your overview of your experience and how you're currently using the service today. But I think it would be meaningful for the for the, the participants today to understand what the implementation process looks like. Can you, can you give us some insight as far as how that went for you? Like I said, um, I remember working with them, um, getting a list. I think it was of the vendors that OptiFreight, you know, partnered with. And if I remember correctly, it was giving my account number to OptiFreight for all those vendors. Like I said, we drafted a, a letter um, that I, I signed off on that was sent, giving you know, say, let's just pick uh, Smith and Nephew or something giving them permission to change our account internally on their side so that all shipping was billed through the third-party OptiFreight account. Um, and, and, and that was pretty much it. Um, and, you know, when you stop and think about it, it kind of makes sense. Okay, yeah, they just have to fill in a blank on their end and say, okay, we don't bill them, we use this third party. Um, we, so that was, you know, for the implementation, that was pretty much it. Um, internally, I guess, we also, you know, um, use it when we ship, you know, returns or just repairs, small stuff, you know, now instead of going through UPS uh, and their website, which is who we used to use before, now we use OptiFreight's website um, to ship everything. Uh, it's nice because they print on online when you look at it, they give you the actual cost of all the different options. And you're a lot of times able to say, oh, second day is going to be cheaper than regular ground. 
I guess because of the proximity of where I'm shipping it to. Um, we've even gotten like our administration department and our medical records department who have to send out a lot of legal stuff. I gave them access to the OptiFreight website and our account number. So it's one of these things that's not even just here in materials. It ended up being a hospital-wide thing that really was just a shift of, okay, instead of going to UPS's website, we're going to go to OptiFreight's website. And from there, everything was the same, fill in the address, where it's going, the weight, and so forth. Yeah, that, that's great. I think that's meaningful to understand what the implementation process felt like from your staff perspective. Um, as, as we mentioned before, best practices, you've, you've touched on two or three that you currently deployed at your facility. Um, so I'd be remiss if we didn't ask the, the meaningful question, what type of savings have you experienced at, at, uh, at Lafayette Surgery Professionally? Well, I think we signed up for OptiFreight, I believe it was uh, four years ago, and probably like a lot of y'all, the industry standard seems to be you track your savings for the first year, and after that it's no longer savings, it's just regular cost. But our first year was uh, $36,000. And I don't know uh, about y'all, but those are kind of things that are feathers in my cap. I get to go report to my boss, particularly around my annual evaluation, and say, hey, look, I saved $36,000. And this was one of those ones that, yeah, I saved the hospital $36,000 by a couple of hours of time upfront investment. And after that, it was just, you know, gravy downhill. It, it just, you know, and that's why I say it's a no-brainer. I kick myself for not having signed up for it, you know, many years ago. Well, well, Tim, I think you're making up for it, talking to your colleagues about here today. So don't feel too bad about it. Um, before we open it up to the group Q&A, last question and kind of give you an open forum here. But what's your overall uh, satisfaction been with your experience? Uh, have you enjoyed it? Have you had any obstacles? And as forthcoming as you can be would be great. Um, it's been great. Um, one of the things when I, like if I go back to having to ship out a pallet, having an inside contact with OptiFreight to do all the work for me um, was great. Again, the savings are wonderful. The implementation is, you know, very minimal. Uh, so overall, it's, it's been a great experience. And like I said, all I did was shift, you know, for my outbound, you know, small packages, just shift from UPS's website to OptiFreight's. That was nothing. And that, actually, I found OptiFreight's website's better. Um, it's easier to use. Not that uh, UPS's was difficult, but I find OptiFreight's is slightly easier to use. And again, it gives me the different cost options, which I get to choose from. Um, so, yeah, implementation, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, overall experience, wonderful. Well, Tim, again, thank you. Uh, hopefully it's more meaningful to all those participants on a, on, on, a, on a call today to understand from someone in their similar position what this program can, can do at their facility. So um, what I'd like to do at this time, and, and Molly, I'm going to ask you to, to, to help us here, but help moderate a Q&A. Um, so any questions the, the participants have, uh, anything we can address, um, myself, Tim, we're happy to take some questions here. We, deliver, we intentionally left a a good amount of time here in the back end of the call to hopefully answer questions that are meaningful to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, Tim. That was a fantastic presentation. Uh, so like Jonathan said, we'll now begin today's question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled enter a question for staff and clicking send. And we'll try to get through as many questions as we do have time for. Uh, so Jonathan and Tim, a few questions did roll in while you were, while you were talking. Um, the first one here is, do I have to be a Cardinal Health customer to participate in the OptiFreight program? Yeah. Probably one of the most common questions and a simple answer. Um, no, you don't have to be a Cardinal client to utilize OptiFreight. Um, OptiFreight is deliberately distributor agnostic. Remember, at the beginning of the presentation, that that's 40% of your product coming in through distribution. We've excluded that. Uh, if it means anything to the group, over half of our surgery center clients across the country are not Cardinal clients, but they do utilize OptiFreight's program. So, uh, common question, but a simple answer. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, this next question here is also about a technical aspect of the program, but about the cost structure of it. How much does it cost? We couldn't get off the call without that question, right? It's probably the most important question, also very common. So um, the, the cost, and this is, you know, Tim can collaborate this, because uh, you mentioned it before, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer, because there is no cost. There is no payment made to OptiFreight for the services. There's absolutely mutual benefit to drive volume through the program. The more shipping through the program, the more you save. 
but from the, the simplest stated answer, there is no cost. You don't pay for the implementation, you don't pay for the reporting, you don't pay for the website. Um, all the value is driven based on shipments that are realized in the, in the program. And, Tim, and that goes just, to the I, point where I was saying that, um, you know, it sounded too good to be true because um, there is no cost and no, it, it, it works. Okay, thank you both. It's me to say, but when Tim says it, it makes more sense, I'm guessing. <laughs> Tim, you did a great job of talking about the savings you saw at your center in one year's time. Um, this listener said, I understand the benefits to an individual center. Are there any additional benefits to a management group or a center with several locations? So Jonathan, maybe you have some insights on that one first, and then Tim, if you have any thoughts, you can you can chime in as well. Yeah, I, I don't mind starting with that one just because, um, and this is, it wouldn't necessarily impact Tim, but I can speak from an OptiFreight perspective. Um, the name of the game here is volume. The greater volume, the greater ability we have to negotiate rates on your behalf. So by aggregating your volume across the system, across a group, we're ultimately able to drive better uh, discounts because of that volume that is realized that we can, and if you think about our role here, we go dangle that volume in front of the carrier and say we need discounts for this type of volume. The more volume, the greater the discount. So, um, there is absolutely, and, and I can speak on behalf of our current client base, uh, we do absolutely contract at the, at the group level, um, both from a, it varies as far as what it actually feels like, but the larger the group, the typical greater discount we're able to provide. Okay. A listener here uh, asked the question, why can't I do this myself? Why do I need a freight management provider? So Tim, maybe this is a question for you, given your how life changed for you at your center uh, before and after you signed on with OptiFreight. Um, well, I mean, as far as you know, being able to do it yourself, I think uh, Jonathan pointed out it's the volume that OptiFreight you know has so many customers that they're able to negotiate uh, better deals. So that's why you know you can't do it yourself, I guess, because you're not going to get those uh, great deals. The difference between shopping at Costco and shopping at the mom and pop you know place around the corner. Somebody's got the volume discount and they can pass on the savings. Yeah, and Tim, I'll ask that. Think about if you try to do this yourself, you'd have to do all the work too. So actually communicating with the vendors, um, uh, auditing your invoices, uh, producing reports, tracking your savings, that's all. A, it, it, it seems like a nice, easy gimme when you use a freight management program, but if you try to do this yourself, you're going to have to deploy your own resources or your own precious time to do what ultimately the freight management provider can do more effectively than you. So you're going to get better value uh, for your time by utilizing a freight management provider. Thanks, Jonathan and Tim. Uh, another listener asked here, will all vendors work with a freight management company? Yeah, I can start there. That's, that's, again, a great question. The simple answer is no. I'm going to be very uh, forthcoming here. Um, not every vendor will utilize a third-party account number. Now, there's a, a multitude of reasons. I can probably spend the rest of the time speaking to that exact point, but just keep in mind that, um, or think about the fact that if you're inherently taking away a profit center, there's going to be some reluctancy from the vendor to just put up their hands and say, sure, I'll use that account number. Now, the reason we've been successful from Alcifrate's perspective over the years is because we've had 15 years of experience and we've leveraged our position in the marketplace We've ultimately leveraged our clients that are helping and supporting dictate to the vendor to participate. So we uh, systematically increase our vendor participation because of that. Um, I, I probably the easiest way to, or to visualize this is if we go back 15, 20 years when freight management first came into the industry, the vendor compliance was nowhere near as effective as it is today. It took time to shift that momentum. Um, it, it, hopefully that, that provides some that, that concept as far as why we can leverage our position and our client's position to force participation, but there is going to be some manufacturers and the suppliers out there that are holding out saying, I don't need to utilize this. But as Tim can mention, um, I mean, we're talking about the vast majority of vendors at this point and at this uh, time in, in the market do participate. And one of the added benefits is besides just the vendors that participate, if you're, like I know sometimes I'll order stuff off the internet for here at the hospital, and some vendors will say, do you have your own shipping account number? Um, well, right there, 
that even takes the vendor off the table that you normally are used to thinking, oh, that's who I order from. You know, you've got that uh, number that you can use yourself when you're ordering over the internet or when you're shipping stuff out. You know, my in my example of uh, the sterilizer company, you know, that's why I always figure some vendors don't want to participate because, like Jonathan said, they want to keep the money in in house. When that sterilizer company didn't want to let go of that shipping, I'm sure they were seeing that five thousand dollars they were going to get. Um, but I use that as leverage to well for them to get the order to begin with because that was the one line I kept picking on them about, and finally they relented and came down on their cost. Great Thanks, point. Ken. This example is really helpful that you're sharing. Uh, the next question here, and Jonathan, this might be one for you, but what are the requirements to get set up as a freight management company? Yeah, so I'll answer this from an Opti Freight perspective. Uh, it, it's very minimal. Uh, typically, there's some kind of contract, so just some kind of agreement as far as you will utilize Opti Freight. Um, but from there, the actual setup is as simple as a list of your vendors and their associated account numbers. Um, depending on, again, some other best practices that you may want to deploy from the beginning or down the road, if you want to use the outbound tool and so forth, there may be some additional uh, understanding of your requirements as far as who the users may be. But from the highest and simplest level, the answer is simply you, you go into an agreement with OptiFreight and you provide a list of your account number or your, your vendors with the associated account number. Thanks, Jonathan. It looks like this is the last question we'll have for today. Can you provide an estimate on how much my surgery center will save on freight? Yeah, and that, that's why it was such an important question for me to ask Tim there at the, at the end of our Q&A. Um, the simple answer is I can't tell you by facility exactly how much you're going to save because we don't know exactly what your procurement process looks like. So how many shipments you're receiving on a given day, week, month, year, we don't know. What we do know is that you can reduce your cost anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of what you're currently paying the manufacturer and if it's meaningful it's that $17 per package is what the average is so um, as Tim mentioned uh, he's obviously has some some from our perspective high volume of uh, vendors shipping into his facility that ultimately allowed him to save more money it's one of those concepts of you know the, the more you sit the, the more you're spending the more you can save so we always talk about it as a percentage of cost reduction not necessarily a dollar amount uh, but I can tell you, you know, we're happy to, to engage, you know, from an OptiFreight perspective, uh, uh, your reps out there that if you haven't uh, met before, I'm sure would be willing, and I believe we'll pass out some contact information here out at the end, if you'd like to understand more about how we can impact your facility uh, uh, directly, and we can address as far as what type of uh, uh, savings we can drive at your institution. Uh, thank you, Molly. Jonathan and Tim, thank you so much for an excellent presentation.